Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are still back on Linux Mint Debian Edition, only now we want to take it a little bit further. KDE is a very popular desktop environment that uh, Linux Mint dropped from official support. And um, I, of course, did a video talking about how to put KDE back on Linux Mint 19. But I wanted to go ahead and experiment with doing that on Linux Mint Debian Edition. And so that is exactly what we have. Now, I did a few things different with the system as part of uh, examining what the, um, what the system could do. Uh, one of the things that I did is I um, installed a new kernel. And so what I wanted to do with the kernel is, oh, I gotta spell that right. What I wanna do with the kernel is I wanted to increase the kernel uh, version to see if that got rid of the media stutter and see if that helps the system run a little bit better. So the Linux Mint Debian edition is based on Debian Stretch, which runs the kernel 4.09. What I did here is I enabled the, uh, the Linux Mint, or excuse me, not the Linux Mint, the uh, Debian Stretch backports, which gave me the ability to go up to, I think kernel 419 is even in there. I went ahead and went with the kernel 418. So I have the Linux, uh, the Linux kernel 4.18 installed on my system. And then I went ahead and installed KDE on top of it. So now I have the choice to switch between a KDE desktop and a Cinnamon desktop. Now, as I mentioned in the last video about this computer, the uh, I really really like Cinnamon as a desktop environment for getting production done, but as I said, it wasn't quite as good for this media PC. The reason is this is a multi-task PC where I check things like dates, I look at the weather, I look things up. Uh, I'm just kind of doing a variety of just little odds and ends throughout the day. And that's really what the purpose of this system is. And so I like having a lot more things like widgets and, and other stuff like that. So this setup here is a little bit different. So of course, if you are unfamiliar with KDE, the disadvantage of it is it can be at times a little bit slower to respond. And it also, um, it also has a lot of settings and configurations. So for example, if you look at the system settings, you can see that, I mean, even opening these guys up, there's even a lot more items inside of each setting. So there's so many different settings, although they are, uh, they are organized fairly well. Uh, this does appear to be one of the, um, one of the older versions of, um, the older versions of KDE. I didn't actually check the exact version number of it. It's not super old. It's just not super new either. Uh, a few of the ways you can tell, uh, one of those is that settings panel. They have been working on making this a lot easier to read and organize instead of gridding it out like this. They've kind of made it stacked on top of itself. The other thing is that the widgets bar up here, which will give us the, uh, some extra abilities to uh, open variety of things, configure desktops, etc. Um, that is actually now moved over onto the right. So that's kind of the way I can tell it's an older version of KDE. Now you can have all these widgets. So this is kind of the way I like my setup here. So I have a calendar so I can very quickly see the date, uh, which is sometimes what I like to do as I'm working, just kind of looking up. And then I have my weather application over here. So this is telling me I have some nice icons and the highs and the lows for the next couple of days. Um, of course, I like my quick launch bar is generally what I like. And then uh, I actually added another launcher over here with other tools that I also use, just not quite as much. And I put a little film strip there because I had a little extra space. And instead of loading in my desktop icons up here or on the quick launch, I basically have access to all my folders right here. Uh, now, I did change this to default to... Um, I changed this to default to a double click instead of a single click. Uh, it is set as single click on default, which is your general KDE setup. That was something I did in the settings. So as far as my theming, I went with a uh, semi-translucent theming here. Uh, it's a very, I just really like this type of theming. It's, it's very nice. It's very, 
um, uh, very just, it's to me, it's attractive. I wanted to go with more of glassy icons like I have on my other KDE build. I couldn't find any good glassy icons in the repositories that worked universally. And so I kind of went with this piratey type theme and I don't even know the name of this either. I can actually find those. Um, let's go into here and let's look at our various themes. So uh, as far as our theme, we are running soft glass is our theme. My cursor theme is called pulse glass. Actually, if you look at the cursor up here, you'll see that will pulse every now and again. Um, the, let's see, colors, I'm on breeze dark. The icon theme is called Steampunk, is the icon theme. And here's what I'm going with on my application styles. Uh, you can also see the uh, on the window, window decorations is the other one. So window decorations, I'm using one called uh, Ambience Dark. The buttons up here are a little smaller to my taste, but uh, they worked for me. So I do have this very nice translucency across the entire system. Um, I did notice a couple little issues. It, this is not auto rendering the thumbnails of my images. Also inside my configure desktop, these are not rendering. I'm probably just missing a KDE package. And so um, I could look into that. And uh, if anybody happens to know off the top, uh, let me know. I'd be glad to put that in. So I just kind of had to go through the desktop wallpapers, figure out what was cool. And I just really like this particular desktop wallpaper with the theme uh, that I had to, had to run with. I have everything else. This is the same exact computer that you saw last time with Linux Mint Debian Edition. Uh, it's just instead of running, uh, instead of running Cinnamon, we are now running KDE. Now let's go ahead and talk about how you get this running KDE because it was not perfectly as straightforward as I would have liked it to be. Um, in general, if you would come in and just install KDE full, there is a package there uh, that is called KDE full. Let me just go by package names. So if you search for this, you'll see this KDE full. Uh, what I found is if you install this on Linux Mint Debian Edition, it does not actually give you any of your uh, your window decorations, which means that you can get stuff running, but there's no close buttons, no minimize buttons, anything like that. So what I ended up doing is uh, not knowing exactly which package did that. I actually went ahead and just, if it had KDE in front of it, I just went ahead and installed. And um, by fun serendipity, I went ahead and was able to get that. Of course, these are language files. I knew that I didn't need the language files. Um, this is, of course, touchpad. If I were on a um, you know, laptop, I might install that. So there's probably something else down here that I need to install in order to get the thumbnails to regenerate. Um, I don't know. Let me just look for... See if there's any, there's games thumbnails. So I don't know. We'll figure out what it is eventually. Um, not a huge deal for me. I don't specifically need thumbnails to go. And once I, now that I have the desktop themed up, I'm gonna keep it like this for um, for a couple days and see how it works. So that is really the thing. Uh, as far as going back and installing your, um, installing your uh, updated kernel, let's see if I can. Nah, that's not there. All right, so what I did is I just searched for a modern kernel, um, which was um, kernel 418 and Debian stretch, which is what Linux Mint Debian Edition is based on. And I just clicked on the first link here, and this gave me actually all of the instructions. And by the way, when I run these like this, what I usually do is I actually get my windows set so they run like this, which is full enough for me, but I can still look up and access everything over here very nicely on my setup. So this is what we had to do. Um, yeah, I didn't bother with any of that part, part. So this is what you need to do. You need to add the stretch back ports to the repos. Uh, it'll basically add that to your sources list and then you update. The next step that you want to do, I'm 
I didn't bother with this at this point. The next step you want to do is you want to upgrade everything. Just run a stretch back ports upgrade to make sure you don't have dependencies break. And then just figure out which kernel you'd like by running your aptitude search Linux image. That's going to give you a huge list of kernels. Um, I, you know what I realized? I don't have my um, terminal over, over here. Let me see. Uh, I should be able to just drag that over there. Uh, I'll get it over there eventually. I should just be able to drag that. Oh, actually, I can't because my widgets are locked. Let me go ahead and just unlock my widgets. And we'll just go ahead and uh, console, drag that over. There we are. Now we have a console over there. And then relock my widget. No, don't lock my screen. No, I locked my screen. Lock my widgets. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> Lock my widgets. All right. Um, so with this, um, I'll just go ahead and copy this guy here so I can do that. Pull up console. And then what this is going to do is it's going to give us a whoa giant list of all the Linux images. So it looks like uh, 418 is where it goes up to. So um, it has this will give you the ability to install a variety of them. Now you do have to be cautious that this is not always going to have all of the security updates in there. This is kind of part of the testing grounds for Debian. So uh, be aware of that if you are needing a full uh, security focused PC, uh, you may not want to do this. But since this is just a media PC production, and then just figure out which one you wanted to install and then, you know, run your um, stretch uh, apt get T stretch back ports install and then pick the um, pick the Linux image that you wanted to do. That's going to give you a update it to your grub menu, which will give you the ability to boot into the latest kernel. Um, it's too early for me to comment on whether or not this actually fixed my issues or not. Um, as far as media, that's what I'm going to be looking at. So uh, expect another review on Linux Mint Debian Edition running KDE down the road, and then we'll kind of see if this works. So overall, this to me is pretty much the most ideal way to run a computer for the media stuff that this computer runs as. Definitely not a main work machine for me, but that is this is that perfect setup for the um, for a uh, just a backup computer that just gets used for checking weather, checking dates, um, basic things like that. So system works out pretty well. Overall, pretty happy with the way this turned out. Took me I don't know maybe an hour or two to get everything set up here, uh, which install. Uh, installing KDE, making it work, putting the new kernel on there, and getting it themed. Theming actually took me the longest because it took me a while to figure out which icon packs I wanted to use, but I'm very happy with this. I like the picture wallpaper. I like the translucency in the in the theming. Um, it's just a, a really nice system um, set up here. So let me know what you guys think. Is this pretty cool? Is this something you want to experiment on with Linux Mint Debian Edition yourself? And uh, just once again, we are still on running Linux Mint. Um, let's see if uh, I should still have my about system over here. Okay, I just got to find my... Not sure I'll be able to find it. There's my Linux Mint welcome screen. Pull up the Linux Mint welcome screen. I'm just trying to get the, uh, I'm trying to get a, get my um, system information up here. It should be in there somewhere. Can't seem to find it off the top of my head, but uh, you know, there we are. Linux Mint Debian Edition running kernel 4.18 and KDE. Uh, I'll let you guys know in a week or two how this runs. Am I running any, any issues or things like that? So thanks for coming along on this brief little video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.
I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.